Well, the first answer to the question, how did they wind up in Egypt, is through attempted murder, greedy slave dealing, and heartless deceit of a broken-hearted old man. That's how the prophecy got fulfilled. It was a spectacular wickedness. How does the Bible describe it? Two ways. Chapter 45, verse 5. And chapter 50, verse 20, they should be circled in red in your Bible. So you go back to them again and again. These are the two verses that interpret the whole story. 45, 5, 50, 20. Take a pencil and circle these two verses. They are the most important verses almost in the story. I'll tell you the most important ones shortly. So let's take each of them. Genesis 45, 5. Joseph has told his brothers who he is, and they are very afraid. And he says to them, Now, do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. So the first way the Bible describes this spectacular sin is that it is God's sending of Joseph to Egypt. The attempted murder, the greedy slave dealing, the heartless deceit of the old man are the sending of God, of a Savior, to prepare hope for the murderers. Now, unless you think that verse 45.5 is kind of marginal, it's the one, it's the one that the psalmist in Psalm 105 picks up on, and he doesn't just say what the verse says, he ups the ante twice fold. I'll read you Psalm 105, verses 16 and 17. It says... Telling the history of Israel. When he, God, when God summoned a famine on the land and broke all the supply of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. So not only does the psalm say that in and through all that spectacular wickedness, God himself was sending a savior... He says, get the thought out of your mind forever that this famine happened by accident or by the devil or by the laws of nature. God didn't look into the future and say, oh my, Satan is going to bring a famine on the land and my people will be endangered. I will now devise a plan to rescue them from Satan's devices. Wrong. Let's just read the verse again. This is Psalm 105, verse 16. When he summoned a famine on the land, and when he broke the supply of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them. God brought the famine. God planned to bring his people to Egypt this way. That's the first way the Bible talks about it. God sent, God sent Joseph. Here's the second way that the Bible talks about what happened to get his people to Egypt. It's in 50, chapter 50, verses 19 and 20. Now the father is dead, and they're really afraid because now it may be that without hurting his father, he'll kill them. That's what a normal human being would do. They would take vengeance. Joseph doesn't seem to be a normal human being. He seems to be signaling something, the kind of person he is. Chapter 50, Joseph says, verse 19, 20, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, You meant evil against me, 
but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people would be kept alive as they are today. The prophecy that 400 years would be spent in Egypt is being fulfilled through a spectacular sin. You meant it for evil and the sovereignty of God. God meant it for good. Do not smudge this verse as though it sent, as though it said, you meant it for evil, God used it for good. That is emphatically not what the verse says. The verse says clearly, no big fancy exegetical footwork here. You had a meaning in this sin, and God had a meaning in this sin. And your meaning in this sin was kill this guy and get rid of him and end this dreaming. And God had a meaning in this sin, and it was save the killers through the sufferings of Joseph. Don't rob God of his precious intentionality. It's called L-O-V-E. 